Hey everyone, welcome back to The Sterile Guy, your top source for everything sterile processing. Today we're diving into one of the most crucial pieces of equipment in any sterile processing department, the steam sterilizer, also known as an autoclave. If you work in sterile processing, you absolutely need to understand a few things, how a steam sterilizer functions, the science behind sterilization, and how to properly operate a steam sterilizer. And trust me, whether you're preparing for certification, you're new to the field, or you just want to deepen your knowledge, this video will make steam sterilization crystal clear. So let's break it down. How do steam sterilizers work? Let's find out. Steam sterilization is the most widely used sterilization method in all sterile processing departments. Why is that? Because it's highly effective. It kills bacteria, spores, and viruses. It's non-toxic. Unlike chemical sterilants, steam leaves no harmful residues. And it's cost efficient. It uses just water, pressure, and heat to sterilize instruments. The key to steam sterilization is moist heat under pressure, which kills microbes by coagulating or denaturing proteins. Basically, it destroys the microorganism's ability to function and reproduce. Before we get into the cycle process, let's take a look at the key components of a steam sterilizer, starting with the chamber, the sealed compartment where instruments are placed for sterilization. Next is the jacket, this is the space that surrounds the chamber and fills with steam to prevent condensation inside the chamber. Think of like an insulated water bottle. Because they have a design like a jacket, it prevents the outside of the bottle from condensating because there's cold on the inside and warmer air on the outside. But with the sterilizer, it is the opposite. There is cold air on the outside and warm air on the inside. We want to prevent condensating inside the chamber because it is cold outside. It will allow that warm vapor inside to condensate onto the side inside the chamber if it doesn't have a jacket around it. And a condensation buildup leads to wet loads and wasted work. Next, we have a steam generator or boiler, which produces high pressurized steam at high temperatures. Smaller autoclaves generally produce their own steam, but for our large capacity sterilizers, we need a separate machine to produce that level of steam or boiler. Next, pressure valves and sensors. These regulate temperature and pressure inside the autoclave. We want to monitor that pressures reach the appropriate levels for steam penetration and air evacuation. Drain line. This area removes air and condensation from the chamber. And lastly, the control panel. This allows operators to select sterilization cycles and access any other data or functions as needed. Understanding these components helps SPD techs operate, troubleshoot, and maintain sterilizers effectively. Now let's break down how steam sterilization works. Every cycle follows four essential phases. The first phase is called the conditioning phase, which is the air removal. The sterilizer removes air from the chamber because air can act as an insulator, preventing full penetration of the steam. This is done using gravity displacement or a pre-vacuum method. With gravity displacement, steam enters from the top or sides of the sterilizer and pushes the air out down through the drain. In a pre-vacuum, a vacuum pump sucks out air first then steam rapidly fills the chamber, which is much more efficient. Now, some of this can be complicated, so let me try to bring some clarity to this. First, you need to know that true steam does not consist of air. It is water vapor only. Air and steam can mix, but what happens is the air reduces the moisture content in areas of the sterilizer that can prevent the steam vapor from transferring heat to the instrument which is what actually destroys the microorganisms. Without the moisture component of steam to transfer the heat, you would need much higher heat for much longer periods of time to produce the same result, which is known as dry heat sterilization, and it's very, very ineffective. And most products can't even tolerate that amount of heat. If you've ever opened an oven, 
compared to getting a cloud of steam from dumping boiling water into the sink. That would be an example of dry heat versus moist heat. You probably know that steam burns much worse because it transfers heat to your skin much more rapidly and effectively. So once the sterilizer removes air, the only thing that remains is pure steam vapor. Okay, I know that's a lot of info, but one more thing that can be confusing to people is how in the heck air is removed from a gravity sterilizer if there's no vacuum. With this process, it relies on the fact that steam is lighter than air. So as the steam accumulates in the top of the sterilizer, the pressure of the steam sits and pushes down on the cooler dense air as it exits out the drain. Now, gravity displacement does not work as effectively as pre-vacuum or pressure pulse sterilization with removing the air, but it does a pretty good job. Now let's talk about why all this matters. Air pockets are an enemy of effective sterilization. They equal incomplete sterilization. Unfortunately, we cannot see air pockets during a sterilization cycle. It's impossible. This is why we rely so heavily on our physical parameters from gauges and sensors. Vacuum cycles are better for complex instruments with lumens, like endoscopes, for instance. Instruments with lumens are not effectively sterilized in gravity sterilizers because of their ability to trap air. Only a vacuum sterilizer can properly remove all the air to include from within the lumens or the channels. Moving on to phase two, which is the exposure phase. This is where sterilization begins. Once all air is removed, the chamber fills with saturated steam, reaching a set temperature and pressure. Here are some standard settings. For gravity displacement, it's usually around 250 degrees at a PSI of 15. With pre-vacuum, it's somewhere between 270 to 275 degrees with a 27 to 30 pounds per square inch of pressure. The exposure phase is when microorganisms are destroyed. Now you might ask, if gravity sterilization is not as effective as pre-vacuum, why is the temperature and pressure less? The reason for that is because gravity sterilization is used for basic instrumentation. Nothing complex, no lumens. These items are much easier to sterilize, but usually gravity sterilization exposure phases are much longer than pre-vacuum. Usually about four minutes with a pre-vacuum compared to like 30 minutes with gravity. Here are some other things to consider. High temperatures equal faster kill time. The higher the temperature, the quicker the exposure phase. Instruments must be properly loaded for even exposure to the steam. Now let's move on to phase three, the exhaust phase, which is the pressure and steam release. Steam exits the chamber through a controlled release valve. This is like flicking the top valve on an Instapot that's been cooking. After a while, the pressure returns to normal inside the chamber. Now let's talk about why a controlled release matters. Instruments begin to cool here as the temperature drops away from the 270 degrees, which was during the exposure phase. And with instruments beginning to cool, sudden pressure drops can cause moisture buildup. And those two things together can lead to wet packs. So it is a steady controlled release. And moving on to phase four, which is the drying phase. This is the moisture removal. Heat remains in the chamber to evaporate remaining moisture. This is where the dry heat comes into play. This isn't like 270 degrees hot, but it's still pretty hot. Some sterilizers also use a vacuum pump to assist drying. Now let's talk about why it matters. Wet packs equals contaminated instruments. If all or most of the moisture isn't removed, it could condensate on the sides or ceiling of the chamber or on the packages themselves, causing pooling of liquid. Items must be fully dry before storage. When items are out of the sterilizer cooling, steam vapor continues to escape as the trays make their way to room temperature. The instruments also cool at the same rate as the rack they are on, which prevents condensation as well. Moving those packages prematurely to storage can cause that residual escaping steam vapor to condensate inside the package, which is no good. To safely and effectively use a steam sterilizer, follow these best practices. Step one, check your load. 
Make sure all items are properly packaged and loaded for even steam penetration. Avoid stacking trays too tightly. Steam must be able to circulate. Step two, select the right cycle. Each instrument has its own parameters that must be met for effective sterilization. Be sure to know which instruments need which cycles. Step three, verify parameters. Check time, temperature, and pressure settings before starting. I've seen this before where a sterilizer will have pre-programmed cycles for like one, two, three, or four, depending on which button you push. But you never know if someone changed parameters of a cycle or something reset. Always read the parameters associated with the cycle before you select it. Step four, monitor the cycle. Look for error codes or warnings. Read the printout receipt to make sure each phase was at the proper temperature and pressure. If a cycle fails, do not use the load. You must reprocess. Step five, inspect and store properly. Check for wet packs. If anything is damp, it must be reprocessed. If multiple items are wet, the entire load must be reprocessed. Store sterilized items in a clean, dry, controlled environment. Basically, the definition of a sterile storage. Even the best sterilizers have issues. Here are common problems and how to fix them. Wet packs, meaning items came out damp. Some of the causes can be overloading or poor drying phase, or it could even be bad quality of steam. Some of the fixes could be spacing your trays properly, increasing the drying times if you're able to, and checking the steam quality with your facility engineers. Another issue could be a cycle failure. This could be where a sterilizer doesn't complete a cycle or aborts. Some of the causes could be a vacuum pump failure, a utility issue, or even sensor issues. Fixes could be to check the errors that your sensors and gauges are working and to consult your sterilizer repair technician if necessary. Pressure drops. The chamber isn't reaching full pressure. Some causes could be degrading door gaskets, vacuum pump or steam pressure issues, or could even be the drain valve is stuck open. Fixes can be to inspect the door gaskets and check any valves. All right, let's recap what we've covered today. Steam sterilization works by using heat, moisture, and pressure to kill microbes. The four phases of sterilization are conditioning, exposure, exhaust, and drying. Proper loading, cycle selection, and monitoring are crucial for success. If you found this video helpful, hit that like and subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Got any questions or topic requests? Drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will catch you in the next one.